slow. Get out of there. I think we're live. Mal. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome, Sean. Oh, thanks, team. How was your week, Scott? Oh, not too bad. Watched a few movies. Just had a little bit of a stress out with uh, one of the programs not working here properly. Can everyone let us know how the audio is, please? If we need to go up or down, sideways, round around. Mm. You can see if we... How was your week, Sean? Well, kind of productive, busy with uh, work, work, and still recuperating from the, yeah, the somewhat very nice uh, private premiering of uh, Lord of Agony, and uh, we'll soon have this uh, Broly feature up online uh, very soon. Yeah. So, so do you have much to do to it before you put it online? Well, just a few little touch-ups to the credits here and there, and... Uh, Ah, uh, nothing really uh, major, that is. Uh, we've been working pretty rigorously on it for the last uh, couple of months in close with uh, limited resources and, uh, let's say, me and uh, Luke sort of battling a bit of a virus, but that's all taken care of. Yeah. Hey, Luke, how you doing, Luke? Hey, Jason. Now your audio's going to be heaps better. Um, so, the venue you've got that you used, is that, does it have, like, a projector and a screen? Is it actually good to for premieres, or is it not? Do you think it's, it's what's the sound system like, for, for example? I would say the sound is uh, somewhat adequate for that of a small film. Like, this was a bit more of a private premiere for a lot of the folks that sort of helped out on it. Due to the random schedule, a lot of the people couldn't really sort of like meet each other in that, so in a way it was a bit more of a bit of a social gathering. So, to be able to show something that you have to be a member, is that right? Oh, yes, that's true. And how much are the memberships? Well, I believe it's uh, say it's around fifty or seventy a year. Oh, that's not too, too bad. And so that, but that allows you access any time you want to go there and use the facilities, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean you have to actually uh, sort of like book in for specific times yeah, and okay. certain areas. But uh, one of the cases is that it's Fremantle, and I just have a bit of a thing for that place. And not to mention it does oh, have a, oh yeah, and it also has a bar on the third floor, and you have a very good view of. Uh, the Roundhouse, followed by the town of Fremantle. And what's the name of the place again? Oh, that's the Navy Club in uh, Fremantle. Navy Club. Cool. Oh, yeah. And so what have you got coming up, John? Well, recently, um, since we'll be putting this one up soon, there's obviously going to be a follow-up. And when the world sees it, uh, I'll give out a little bit of a minor thing, is that it sort of ends in a cliffhanger and hopefully we'll get people hungry for more and a lot of the cast are somewhat very eager to sort of jump on to the next one and for the meantime I've just been writing up the scripts rigorously a little bit in secret and at the same time writing up treatments on a few other things including a bit of a spiritual sequel to a film that we uh, premiered last year <laughs> How are we now, Jason? Just, just talk, Sean? Uh, testing, testing, one, two, three. Yeah. So did you say you're doing short? Oh, yeah. Well, actually, um, no, no, it's uh, sort of like a follow-up to the film we premiered uh, oh, okay. last year. So far, it's in a treatment process, but it's... What, the Black Ghost? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it's actually ironic. Um, When I first wrote the story of Black Ghost, it was more just a... A sort of a, a storyboard I think it was about maybe 20 40 pages and it was a very sort of a paper thin type story of um, set in a sort of a dumped up cyberpunk future of some random bounty hunter duking it out with a uh, demon worshipping punks which is uh, nothing really like the actual film but I think if something like that was in a film it'd be very one-dimensional and uh, as hollow as plain uh, white What's bread. What's wrong with Satanism? Well, Hashtag nothing wrong Satanism. with that. But maybe there was a, you know, a little bit more to the actual plot from what I remembered. But uh, a lot of the pictures was sort of collecting dust. And ironically, I actually uh, created a follow-up story where he, um... Yeah, for some strange reason, there was some sort of, like, supremacist group that the character was uh, juking it out with. I never really completed it 100%, but, uh... Fortunately, the actual treatment I'm working on is a, uh, how do I say, it's more intellectual and would dig somewhat deeper into more, 
you know, darker territory of things. And also it Going does... the philosophy stuff? Or? Oh, yeah. And, of course, dealing with the aftermath and the, the depression that man goes through. And not to mention, uh, I know there's a lot of love for the Charlie Brolo character. And I've always appreciated that um, Andy uh, liked that role a lot. Yeah, yeah, I think is that is that better, Jason? Yeah. I'm still a bit soft, but um, the good thing was a lot of people compl compl complimented Andy on the role, considering he'd oh, never yeah. really done yeah. acting as as such yeah. before. Well, that was the thing. Uh, I actually sort of a, uh, I always sort of tailored it towards Andy in mind. Um, I know there was a another film where I think he was supposed to be playing a cop or something, and he never really got much to do. And uh, yeah, Andy's a guy that has a lot of swag, and I was like thinking, hmm him and a bit of a cop thing would really work but of course with the treatment there's going to be more emphasis on the Brolo character and a lot of it's going to get more into the philosophies of family and um so the how do i say so uh just one sec yeah keep going yeah a bit more demons of the past catching up to us and i think that's something that sort of came into mind uh where people try and put things behind them, but some things always seem to creep up. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So, um, Aaron, let me know tonight that Black Ghost has been, had official selection for Yay! the World Premier Film Awards in Canada. Um, Congratulations to everyone involved with Black Ghost. Yeah, I've checked out the list. We're up against four other feature films. So, um I think we don't find out till about the end of July. From it's a world, it's a world, world premiere, isn't it? So it's a world film, film awards, festival. Yeah, it's so the online awards. I think the judges have the final say, not the audience, from what I understand. Um, so I got that through today. We, we were nominated. We were in one before, but we didn't win anything, which is fine because these laurels are good to put on the posters because you know it's good for advertising and marketing. Um, we have. I'd like to thank the Academy. Yeah, mm. thank you, thank you, oh, and my family. Um, so we have, there's another teaser for, it looks like a local film called Murals. Um, I actually watched it, it's not too bad. It looks like it's about people that paint murals, but there's also a little bit of violence in there as well. So I know there's a crowdfunding running for that on Indiegogo. Um, um, we'll bring that up for you shortly. I'm trying to, and I've got some more local stuff, but we'll wait till this happens Who first. Who is that? Jeremy. Jeremy. Jeremy from Lords of Agony. Oh, my, yes. My offsider. Oh, did he do murals? Oh, yes, he was... Um, I saw him do um, something for the murals thing today. Yeah, he plays a tradie in uh, one of the Lord of Agony scenes. Yeah, he plays my offsider. And, and the thing is, that, yeah, he looks uh, very convincing as a South Central type uh, hooligan in the, in the trailer. Ah, oh, but awesome fella. Yeah. No, I'm actually looking forward to it, you know. It's... To what? Oh, the murals. Oh, murals. Yes. Yes. Murals. Yeah. Mm. I, don't, I don't know if it has the... Um, Mr. Jeremy Pickett posted it up today. I don't know if it has a release date on it. I'm not sure. No, it is. Mm. Murals teaser. Well, it's actually a teaser, so um, I think they still have quite a bit to do. Well, that, I think that's why the crowdfunding. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Crowdfunding thing. Uh, Vimeo. Teaser. And... Um, I'm not set up to do Vimeo, so I'll just uh, quickly do... Um, quickly do a thingamajiggy here. Oh, thank you for using the word thingamajig. I thought I was the only person that ever used it. Keep talking. Yeah. Thanks, Jason. Okay. How are you, Gary? Jason said congrats on the film festival. Uh, so, Jace, when are we? When have you rain checked the um, female bloodlines for? I know you were crook, so we weren't able to do it. Um, I'm not sure. Hmm. There's some other. Okay, so Fool's Kitchen. I'm going to skip to that. Yeah. Where are we? We are. Uh, okay, so Scott's edited the first two episodes. Uh, just needs the sound, the intro, the credits done, and then it'll be uploaded to YouTube. We did create a YouTube channel, um, but obviously it's not public yet or we haven't uh people don't know about it yet until the episodes are on there how many episodes is there that you got to edit you've yet done two <clears throat> so the first episode's really like 
me doing the cooking right here on on this live. Um, and then the the first reel, or that would, could be a that pilot. could be that could be zero. A pilot. That could be zero, couldn't it? And AFK one is Peter. Yep. Um, which is halfway through editing. Um, AFK two has had most of its edit done. Um, yesterday I did most of that yesterday. And who's on AFK two? Uh, Jimmy. Cool. Oh, the Lord Chris Sybil. Oh, you know the guy who is um, painting you destroyed. Oh, is uh, that his name? The uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. He was uh, yeah. So he's in the scene with me and Jeremy Pickett and oh, him right, okay. on the Lord of Agony. Oh, oh yes. Where he has a, now I'm picking up where you're Jimmy, down. Jimmy has a bit of a cry in the corner. Hey, Jimmy. Um, and number three was pretty much edited the other day with uh, Brett Veratis. Oh yeah, awesome fella. Bulldog from yeah. Black Ghost. Yeah. That is true. Um, Nick the Miner. A little trivia on that uh, last scene with Bulldog. Uh, I think it was take number four where I think it was my ass bone or back of my spine uh, sort of chipped the shed. Yeah, so my yelling was As you're running real. out the door or... Oh, when you're getting thrown oh. up against the shed. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, actually I'll... very funny. I had to help out the dragon fire team in the hex event right after the shooting bell divers. We were standing inside that shed, taking stuff off the wall so it didn't fall down, yeah, fall down yeah, and break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like we're like, oh no, that's gonna fall. Oh, that's gonna fall. Yeah. <laughs> and um, as the thing, um, I was working in the hex event in Metro City like several hours later, and the thing was, I just couldn't really sit down. It's like, I don't know. I was like, I yeah, I had like some crooked butt syndrome or something. Yeah, when know. he gets thrown against the shed and like goes, that that's pretty fucking real. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, and uh, there's a few other um, unusual... Pretty encounters. real stuff, like rolling on the ground and... Oh, yeah. Including swimming in cold waters. Oh, wait, that that, that was uh, uh, last year, uh, 2017, but yeah. I'll talk more about that one a bit later. <laughs> I'll just see if I can do this quickly. No, doesn't want to do it. Don't know why. Sorry. Experimenting a bit. Um. I'm sure. Ish, I'm sure it'll be on YouTube. Anyway, I don't know. All right. So we've got a guy called Tristan Reddick. It's also on this page. I link to it. Is looking for someone to do voiceover or narrating for a live show on the 25th of May. So he's actually looking at recording it before that, and then he's um he's going to put it up on a live show. So the link to that is on this page. Uh, a lady called Sophie Armstrong is looking for a videographer for a two-day corporate event in June. Again, that's on the page as well, so if you think that's something you might be interested in, uh, hit her up. Ryan Woos, who's actually, I hope he's out of hospital now, he's, he's appendix burst. I hope he's feeling better. He does podcasting. Um, he uses a podcasting uh, channel called Podbean. Um, episode number four, he's doing them on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, part two. Is it an audio? I've never heard of Podbean. I'm gonna write yeah, it's that an audio down. one. I, I think I've still got it on my phone. Um, so it's just, just audio podcasting? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Jimmy Kuratz, he's a local comedian as well as chiropractor. Jimmy's going to be on the show next week. He sure is. He has a YouTube channel called Dirty Church. Um, very funny. But, uh, yeah, feel free to check it out. I think you'd like some of the content that's on there and the way he delivers it. Uh, I've mentioned Fool's Kitchen. What else have we got here? Okay, so there's a new fan film out. It's called Michael vs. Jason, Evil Emerges, and it's ra racked up 1.5 million views in one week. So that's we're going to post that up on the page. I haven't seen it yet, but I'll check that out. But yeah, 1.5 million views in a week is crazy. And I think, again, another fan film based on Freddy and... But it's Michael this time, not Freddy and Jason, so... Mm. Is that what to you? Yeah. Because it seems like yeah. uh, Jason has dominated Freddy in the films, didn't he? Um, or something, so I, I think, think... I think it was a bit back and forth, because there was oh, one okay. where um, Jason cuts Freddy's head off. And... Oh, okay. Okay, because I think maybe people were tired of the Jason versus Freddy matchup, so they decided mm, pit Jason against Michael. Or... Well, this is this is a fan film. Oh, okay. So like we're doing with Scarecrow, someone's made a fan film, which 
with fan films, you can't monetize them. So you can put them on YouTube, you just can't make any money from them. You can't put them on Amazon, um, that sort of thing. So be... you can pay your actors and your production yeah, yeah. crew, and so the money. So people. People can make money out of it. It just can't turn a profit. That's right. Yeah. So, any, so any the producer make, doesn't make money out of it. The producer can get paid for it. Yeah. The whole cast and crew can get paid, or you donate it to a charity. It's just the film can't make money from a platform, mm. except for crowdfunding. So you could just run it like as a percentage to everybody mm. thing. Yeah. So if you want, five, if you raise five grand, then you work out okay, you're getting this much, you're getting this much. Pay all your cast and crew or use it all purely for the production and not pay anyone. It's completely up to the people. So the investor that didn't do any work in it, if he put five grand in, he only gets five grand back. He gets nothing back. Mm. Because the money goes to the production and the crew, so because it won't make any money, he won't get any money back. Even though it's um it's a it's it's a cost of it's a cost in the movie. Yeah. That's yeah. why unless the, like with Jag for example, he put money into Black <laughs> Ghost. Once Black Ghost makes that money back, we give him the money back. But yeah, because, yeah. The, because the fan films what don't make the money back, they make money from crowdfunding, which can be used like for charity. You could pay your investor back, or ah, you okay. could pay back your, or you just use the pay cast and crew. But the film itself won't make any money to be able to, you know, pay the investor back per se. Mm. You could pay him back from crowdfunding if he puts money in that way. Oh, that reminds me of uh, fan films. There was the uh, Batgirl trailer that came out like a few weeks back. Yeah, I think uh, we showed that a few yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, we posted that up. Yeah. What was your take on it, though? Um, like it's, um, well, it looks very well someone, edited. You know, some of it was, I think it was very well shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah Aaron, I think Aaron um, can't do the editing for that. Oh, yeah. I'm not an. I'm not overly keen on fan films. Like, I, I like I like the premise and all that yeah. sort of stuff. But... Yeah, I mean, I actually... Um, I'm not really that into doing them, but I like it when others do it and uh, they make it. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, the artist in me. It's like I always aim to try and do something original in myself and stuff. Maybe it's actually the cat, because yeah. I'm actually pretty... Yeah, you know, the Scarecrow one, um, I'm actually pretty keen on, because I, like, I yeah. really like Scarecrow. But in a way, that's actually somewhat interesting, because not much people really uh, look into it that much. Well, Gotham and, did do... Season four, they did do an origin <clears throat> story on, yeah. on on Scarecrow, but it's different to what we're doing. He's already grown, um, and yeah, it's it's if you watch a bit of it, it's it's the one we're doing is different. He's he's a younger kid, and it goes from there. So, okay. yeah. but uh, you need Netflix to watch Gotham, right? No, you don't need. You don't need it, but it's oh, better if okay. you use it. Okay, because I don't have Taps any Netflix nose. or uh, any um, of that stuff. I can make sure that you see it if you oh. like. But we, we might be making Scarecrow into a trilogy. We're just going to see how the first one gets received first. Ah, cool. Let's see if we can transition here um, and look looked awesome at doing it. So this is Murals. This city is a war zone. These streets. These streets are battlefields. It's us versus them. Our blood paints these walls. At least, that's what they tell me. Empty words spoken by thieves and liars meant to, to blind. Um, that's the Irish version. Yeah, well, we are down under. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing must have been taking Jamison or something, man. Yeah, sorry for having that upside down. I'll just... Uh, Go back in there. I think this is how it happened. Maybe. Hmm. And who did you say is is that that guy Jeremy Pickett? Did you say? Yeah, Jeremy Pickett. Well, he um. Is it his film or is he the star? Well, I think he he's an actor, so yeah. Yeah. he's one of the main characters in it. I'm okay. sure of it. Yeah. There we go, I think. He, he must use very good gel, gel for his hair, that's for it's sure. still upside down, isn't it? Yeah. Here we there go. You know. Here we go. Sorry about that, guys. It's, uh... Yeah, it's, it's getting there, it's getting there. One sec. I only I only taught myself this 10 weeks ago now, off right. off YouTube. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, YouTube and Google are your friends. So, yeah, between, like, probably five videos on OBS um, on YouTube... I've just fumbled around and done all, all this myself. So we'll reset that to the start. And Mural's teaser. 
This city is a war zone. These streets, these streets are battlefields. It's us versus them. Our blood paints these walls. At least, that's what they tell me. Empty words spoken by thieves and liars meant to, to blind. I have lost friends to those words. But in the end, I guess I finally figured out the words I wanted to say. I'm sorry. very interesting and i'll post the link up to that right now hey jiginda jiginda said we're sponsored by corona <laughs> uh this podcast does not uh actively Go promote promote drinking. corona oh no, i don't no but oh, okay. I, I, <laughs> I promote drinking drinking well, makes people very happy okay. you know it's kind of ironic in america in, in mexico they get it for like 20 40 cents over there yeah. Is it the same stuff though? Uh, it could better. be potentially. There's got bigger bottles as well. They they did import it a couple of times at a bottle shop. But Ooh, speaking yet. of uh, big bottles and all that stuff, um, yeah, I think some of that's often played big into uh, movies as uh, DVD shops. Uh, one of them just closed down like several weeks back in Morley. Rest in peace, Blockbusters Australia. Oh, yeah. Now here's the thing. I actually bought um two films from there and. Uh, these were the last two DVDs I will ever buy from Blockbuster. One was a, a very underrated flick for the 90s, One Good Cop, which was a crime drama thriller starring Michael Keaton. And the other one is the Black Panther film, which is uh, one of the major Marvel films that have been released just recently. And, uh, yeah, this was requested from a friend of mine um, for me to bring up this topic and uh, what's my take on it because of all the... The controversies online of some people always accusing it because of the you know, black supremacy and uh, you know we were conversing a, <laughs> a bit before, well, before it was we a, went it was there. in an isolated setting where there was only black people yeah very true so it's very hard to actually for a city full of black people to talk badly about white people which they didn't do in the movie yeah that is true so that's and not really black supremacist it's just an it's it's just an echo chamber of black people hmm. And not to mention uh, one of the one of the buddies of the Black Panther character, who was a CIA guy. He was a Caucasian, and he wasn't downplayed by any means. He was a very sort of capable character. And uh, if anyone who watches the film, you know, you can clearly understand that he's cl he's not like a fry from Futurama or anything. Yeah, so he's not sort of billed down as a token white guy or anything like that. Well. Fry from Futurama was like the first person to actually travel through time. Hmm, by accident though, but yeah, maybe not as graceful as Link from uh, Zelda Ocarina of Time, that's for sure. So, repeat? Uh, not as graceful as Link from Zelda Ocarina of Time. Zelda is a game. Yeah, but Futurama is a cartoon series. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah, I well, got the I, I got the Zelda that. bit, but there's like, uh, is there is there many Zelda games? Is there? Oh yeah, plenty. You know, uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm, Legend of Zelda, not my forte. Zelda Two, Link's Quest, uh, Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening, Zelda Ocarina of Time, Zelda Majora's Mask, Zelda the Minish Cap, Zelda the Wind Waker, Zelda the Twilight Princess, Oracle so of Seasons, no, Oracles of Ages. Uh, let me say Skyward Sword. Twilight Princess, re-release, Phantom Hourglass, and then the Spirit Tracks, and then recently you have uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, and uh, as always, you'll always have those like uh, spin-off games like uh, Link's Crossbow Trainings, and those weird crossovers, and Smash Bros, and all the other mumbo-jumbo, but don't want to stray too much off topic. Uh, that was very impressive, actually. Oh, thank you. Um, so Jaginda said he's also having a corona now. Jaginda, you're welcome to come on the show if you want. Next after, so you said we got Jimmy next week. Yep. Then I think we got Dimitri the week after that. The hardcore Greek. <laughs> so even though next Monday is 
is Easter Monday, we're still going to be have a show. Mm. What ghost? Casper the ghost. Don't you mean Casper the ghost? Who the fuck is Black <laughs> Ghost? Um, That's uh, two weeks away. So, do we want to show the trailer to this Michael versus Jason? Um, yeah, uh, I haven't so, seen it. So, uh, uh, just yeah. uh, give me a quick sec to bring it up. I thought I did bring it up, but. Uh, and I'll re-edit the crew list for Scarecrow because we're still after quite a few crew members as well. I'll, call, I'll let you know them shortly. Oh yeah, that's that's the thing, you know, it's just uh, wow. racking up the team. Yeah. Uh, just give me a couple of seconds to line this up. Hey Emily, how are you? Um. All right. Oh, it's not coming up just yet. That's right. So. Uh, Sean Gonzalvo still has the crowdfunding for Alexander going. I think he's when I checked, he's up to about three or four hundred bucks. No. Um, I think Emily and Peter have still got the crowdfunding for Elvira going. I haven't checked how that's going. Um, yeah, there's crowdfunding for murals. I'm not sure what else is crowdfunding. Mm. Well, you're going to Uber it, Jaginda. <laughs> yeah, come drink with us. So I'm using the uh, studio mode of OBS to do proper transitions here, so so li things look fucking This pro. is the, the technical jargon, man. Pro. I just, I just that is true. I'm actually, just watching the, amazement. Actually, if the computer was much closer, I could see a lot better. So actually what's happened is Scott's camera, the program for his camera wasn't working tonight, so we're using his phone. Yeah. He's, yeah. Very, he's very adaptable. That's the reason why I've nicknamed him the Rusty Shackleford of the Perth film. Uh, thing. Which, in layman's terms, is. In other words, Dale Gribble. Who is in like layman's the, terms, is. Is like the T1000 equivalency of the Perth film thing. You know, you're very adaptable, sort of like liquid metal. You Maybe a little bit more layman you're terms. A bit, you're a bit yeah. like, like, like water, you can take the shape yeah. of, of, of anything, or you can do. Be like yeah. water. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and not to mention, especially when you're on camera, like, you know, you're the bold guy in the very start, like in 2017, and then suddenly you're sort of the same character, but you have a beard and you have, you have hair this time. Yeah, I went to a party on uh, Saturday night. No one recognized me, ever not, even though I was there with a beard last time. And they're like, oh, you're that guy. <laughs> Just yeah. before we get into this, actually that's speaking me. Of, of nicknames, did you say you had a nickname that you're going to reveal, Sean? Oh, yeah, that's, I'm going to... You, you want me to reveal it now, or... Oh, you oh, can you reveal it any time you like. Oh, okay. Um, well, you see, uh, there's often been these... Uh, the case with uh, cakes and everything and a lot of the products I've been doing, and a lot of them have been ad-libbed, and a lot of them have popped up by accident. And a lot of this uh, kind of started... Like, with the film thing, it sort of started around 2016, where... When we were doing the end film, I gave a lot of people nicknames. One person was nicknamed the Pavlova, and the other one was nicknamed the Protein Bar in order to separate them because my brain was going yo-yo, so, you know. Now, but somehow I ended up having flashbacks of high school, and my high school era was the glory days of hip-hop. This is when DMX and uh, Eminem was on an uprise, and at the time it was a big deal with a white guy, you know, rapping, everyone busting a rap, and... You know, everyone wished they were, you know, like uh, African-American in a way, you know, and we were in Australia, and you had to wear baggy jeans, or if you don't ba wear baggy jeans, you know, you basically get an ass whooping. And you had to wear do-rags and all that, and you're not allowed to diss any rappers, or if not, you know, you get a pummeling. Were you the from the northern was, suburbs, were you? When I, yeah, my uh, first high school, uh, Craigie Senior High, was a bit sort of like the... Um, <laughs> How do I say? I don't know. I always felt like it was a bit of an Alcatraz type. And then uh, I got transferred to Burridge Senior High, which was uh, kind of like the Little South Central. And um, there I eventually got the nickname of uh, Baby Cakes. I really didn't know Baby what it was. Cakes. But a lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the homie guys fucking stick now. who uh, fortunately I was friends with, they always told me, bounce, Baby Cakes. And it's like, okay, is that what I do? And... No, but it was it was pretty good, you know. Um, I must say I, that um, with your infatuation with um, with sweets, I think that's very apt. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it's somehow it's I don't know it had this. Well, uh, well, our little nickname for his Pavlova boy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think that sort of goes with a soft, pillowy type. How's Pavlova boy doing? That's true. 
And uh, just for a bit of a promotion, there is the the Belden Bakery, which is uh, what you call, um, I think it's uh, called the Queen of Hearts Bakery in uh, Belden, next to the Belden Shops. That's ba- in the Baby Northern. Cake Central. Oh, yeah. They make, uh, they make some of the best apple pies in the northern suburbs, and they can create some customized cakes for you. One is like a pavlova and a black forest uh, merged together, so it's actually worth checking out. Especially, they happy to do gay weddings? Yeah. Uh, they can create wedding cakes, yeah. But, um, yeah, in case you have a filming in the northern suburbs, they're definitely good to check out, especially for their pastry, sausage rolls. Everything is, like, you know, baked uh, straight up on the spot, just in case you have a f- filming in the northern suburbs. Uh, the Belden Bakeries are definitely worth a check-up. Do they do any keto sweets? Because I'm, I'm trying to go carb-free at the moment. Hmm, actually, um, I will look into it. Yeah, ask him. And they also it's do. A, it's a growing market. Yeah, they actually do some nice pecan pies too. Uh, allergic to nuts. Oh, nuts! That's why he's not gay. Um, Emily said they're at almost three grand for Elvira. Oh, congratulations! Gary said, "Scott, have you got a new haircut?" And Emily laughed. Ha 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 ha. Um, so I shaved my head just before the Three Amigos, which was a month ago. Mm-hmm. And this is the growth. Oh, okay. And Nathan Mullally has called you Baby Kate Schliwa. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, in a way, no that's, uh, that's uh, kind of good. It uh, gives me a better image because... Uh, mm, While we're talking about nicknames, I might as well yeah. talk about Triple S. I have a motorsport chat show on Sport FM here in Perth called uh, Flat Chat, where me and um, an old rally driver of mine, because I used to be in, um, the head mechanic on a couple of rally teams, um, we're interviewing... One of my mates who used to be on the Pirelli circuit for the American Le Mans series. Um, and at the start of the show, um, Aaron Malloy introduced me as the very sexy Scotty Shortland. And uh, Shannon, dressed his soul, goes, uh, Why don't you just call him Triple S? And half of Fremantle was listening because I was, was actually working at the Clink as a bartender at the time. And that nickname just stuck. 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 Well, when I was working as a crane driver, there was five Scots yeah, right, okay. in 12 people, and no one was actually named Scott. Everyone had a nickname. Yeah, right. Mm. Well, I got my nickname in the fridge <coughs> when I was playing basketball because my surname's Chiller. And oh, I did it. Oh, so that's where I got that penny dropping. Well, that well, is... When I used uh, to play, the, because of, of... Or, like, when I was captaining, they'd call me the enforcer, but the fridge was the main one I got, and now people get why. Uh, that kind yeah. of reminds me about Black Ghost. There were quite a few Sean's on set. Uh, should we give the nickname of Gonzalo, or is it okay? Special K. Yeah. yeah is it, is it okay to say that yeah, on radio? Because I think his middle name was K, started with a K, so it's going to call him Special K because it's okay. like, like, sort of, sort of like at least the, three Sean's on set. Sort of like the Kellogg's Corn Flakes Special K, right? Yeah, looking, feeling good. Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. Okay. And there was another Sean, a uh, nice fella. He was from the countryside. Is that, I, is I, that Sean Walsh? Yeah, I nicknamed him Banjo because he kind of reminded me of a young Banjo Kazooie. And there was something awesome that happened on the day. Uh, I'm not sure. It's kind of random and it was uh, sort of irrelevant to the film. But it's like uh, he got one of the gaffer tapes. He uh, curled it into a bowl. And uh, uh, let's just say he was. Uh, if you ever always have annoying people on sets, you know, like let's just say you have paparazzi types, uh, Banjo is very good at getting rid of them. Was he, what was he doing with the ball? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's all right. Well, I think I'll say that. Story I'll, for another day. I'll say that story for my memoirs. But he's an awesome fella. I thought this is the time that we're going. He might be writing memoirs. Well, okay. Um. Let's just You're the say. lead actor, stroke writer. He's the producer. I was. I did all the sound. I think this is the best time to talk about this sort of well, stuff. Okay. Um, he threw this. Uh, he threw this uh, scrunched up, taped up bowl, and somehow it hit one of the. Um, what's his name? The skinny fella. Um, the. The. The sax machine. Yeah. Oh, sax machine. Yeah, hit him in the groin, and. <laughs> oh boy, that was. Uh, uh, that, was, that was a blast. Ziggy's watching and he said the beers, yeah. look, ra- the, the beers look rather empty. Yeah, well, you, it's your side, Fridge. Jeez, man. I mean, he's after going <laughs> to the fridge, don't I? And it's actually just out of shot, so... Well, while that's happening, um, we'll play the trailer for Michael vs. Jason, Evil Emerges. And play and transition. <laughs> Thank you. 
Maybe we can have some sound. Yes, sir. How's the prisoner? He hasn't said a word or moved. He's just sitting in his cell doing nothing. How'd you capture him? He's been on the run for months now. Where did you find this coward? We found him in someone's backyard. He was just standing there, and he let us turn him in. He was standing over a dead body, but the body has been dead for weeks. He didn't kill him. Something else did. We also found a piece of clothing in the backyard nearby. It belongs to someone else. It's like the whole thing just phased the prisoner. This is dangerous, but I want you to give him the mask. What? Do it. I want to see if he'll say anything when he has the mask. I've been put in charge. Take him to the execution range. I'll be there. I want him executed. I don't want the general knowing. Let's do this quickly and take as little backup as you can. After I've killed him, I'll dump his body in the forest nearby. I'll be there. This is actually the whole film. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say it's probably best not to spoil it for everyone, though, so, uh... Yeah. Sorry, guys. I, yeah, I thought that was the trailer. You get no. the idea. Now, we have an issue. The first part sounded American, and that bit there where they were talking, are they Australians trying to, or Kiwis trying to put on American accents, or...? Let's take a mean? poll, if anyone, yeah. to the people who are listening. I mean, the guy who was, like, present in the scene, he he was the one with the American accent, but then, like, through the transmission, it sounded like the guy switching between... Australia, yeah, Australia. yeah, it sounded British at even at some points. I'm like, yeah. It's... I did feel like it was mostly Australian, but some of those words, I don't know if he's hanging around... Um, yeah. Our friends from across the ditch or not, but... Um, well, he's not James Hagen. So I I'll vote, put it that way. I vote New Zealand. Yeah. You vote. Well, uh, I'd say it was an Australian guy trying to do an American accent. It's a pine yeah. forest. It could happen anywhere. Yeah. Hmm. Looks pretty good. Oh yeah, I mean, like in terms of its it aesthetics. It goes for twenty minutes. Uh, especially the start, you know, it I'll really did remind layer. you of the glory eighties of all its uh, gore-fested era. It's a short fan film we did with no budget. The two most iconic killer faces, face-offs, killers face-off in a battle to the death. So no budget, eh? They would have had some budget. Have you got a um, country version? That's what I'm looking at now. Unless a lot of the folks who um, helped out on the film already had the gear and uh, items. <laughs> yeah. Kind of helps. Um, well, latex isn't that hard to 
do if you know how to do it. Oh, yeah, that is true. Especially the art of creating a um, prop telescope to bash on ghouls, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Well, they would have had to purchase the masks. Jason's mask and Michael's mask, I would say. Because mm. they look almost identical. Isn't Jason's mask just a... Hockey mask. Hockey mask? Yeah, but it has to have that red stripe and all that sort of thing on it. Oh, yeah. Mm. Little bit of painting can do the trick. <laughs> Not that one. That's that film I skipped through. <sighs> he uh, skipped through V for Vendetta. Oh, okay. He doesn't really seem to watch much of the films you uh, recommend, uh, do you? Never. Ah, okay. I was wondering... Um, um, he doesn't like English accents. Okay. Because he's got Scottish heritage. I some oh, some I just, of his heritage is Scottish. I just think they're annoying in their Shout out to his mum. uneducated, that's all. Oh, that's not that's, all of them. Well, one film that I've seen recently in the cinema. Is very highly yeah, yeah, educated. Um, you know, it, it doesn't have any English accents. And uh, as a matter of fact, it has a lot of southern accents. It's The Green Book. What have you thought of it? So, last week, as everyone knows, I just started watching it like just before people were, rock up, were rocking up on Monday. And I actually I haven't gone back to it. I really like the intro. Um, it. For me, it sounded like like um, New Yorky gangster. Is that was that the start of it? Oh yeah, Boston? that's uh, that's uh, more Tenson's character. He plays Tony Lip, who is a New York bouncer for a certain club. So then yep. later on, appointed a job to be a bodyguard slash driver. Yeah, so I got I got up to where he so the so the black guy is a singer. Mm-hmm. Um, and he wants to travel around the southwest. He needs a security guard, and that's what I've got up to. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, how I, did you like it? What did you rate it? Well, I actually give it a solid four out of five, though. Four. Now, it's actually something true. Uh, I was having a conversation with uh, my buddy uh, Luke Rodriguez uh, several weeks back, and hey, Luke. And for some weird reason, and this happens to with uh, a lot of people I talk to, they always think that I only like films where things explode and stuff but the action films yeah i'm like i actually like variety <laughs> i actually unfortunately i forgot to put up a review on this movie on facebook but it was so underrated anyway that i only saw it mostly by chance because i saw it advertised on um youtube with those ads and yeah it was a very nicely sort of laid back film and it was actually good to sort of get a breath of fresh air because i think the explosion in movies today is so frequent and uh of course a little spoiler no one dies in the film or anything like that though you get a lot of a uh, sort of great cra- yeah a lot of gritty tensions in the movie itself and uh i know of course you know it's supposed to be based on a true story and there are going to be some sort of inaccuracies for the sake of you know moving the people do forward. get seriously hurt in the movie oh yeah that is true and uh so on and so on, and of course the struggles of the um, African American characters and all that. But yeah, an African entertainer—I mean, a, a Amer- African American entertainer in the Deep South. It, it was in the sixties, fifties. Oh, it's uh, set in the early sixties, though. Which film is this? So, uh, per- uh, Green Book, starring Viggo Mortensen and Mohashed uh, Ali. Um, when was I had a dream? Ooh. Uh, he, can you uh, look that up, please? Jamie, hey yeah. Jamie, can you Hang look on, something so up for us? Just let you know that this fan, it, uh, there is an Australian actress, Rebecca Rose, in that for, uh, Jason vs Michael. Um, I'm going to look up the director and see where he's from. Mm. But uh, the one thing uh, about the Green Book, it really gets you hungry. <laughs> when they, the moment they arrive in the South, that's when Moore Tenson's character is like, ah, fried chicken. And he actually has a lot of fried chicken in the film. Are they down? In the deep south? Oh, yeah, and a lot of buttered corn. This movie actually has a lot of it, which is pretty cool. And some nice and maybe music. some ribs? Oh, yeah. I mean, the music, the, 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 the music's probably not as epic as the Blues Brothers, 1982, you know, the, the original Blues Brothers, but it does have some really nice tunes to it. So, yeah, The Green Book is actually a pretty good watch. Um, I'd say uh, if you're into sort of a little bit more of late back films. gave it a four. Yeah, four, four, four out of five. Which uh, Andy Gray said that uh, your sound is out of sync with the video, and Sean has an echo. 
Oh, sorry about that. that is, uh... So that is an American film. The director's American, but looks like he's used to Australian actors. I think Rebecca Rose was in the film, the Titan. Oh, sorry, the series, the Titans on Netflix. It has Brendan, Brendan Thwaites, who was in Son of a Gun. He's the lead to the supporting to Ewan McGregor, who plays Robin in Titans. Oh yeah, and I th I think he was also in that Pirates of the Caribbean film, or possibly yeah. Yeah. But he actually plays the lead as Robin in uh, Titans. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty good to have on the resume. Yeah, yeah. That's right. It's pretty gory. How's the sound now, Andy? Can you let us know, please? Uh, the compressor was right up. I turned the compressor right down. Um, that microphone is running off a different desk to these two. Because um, we should be getting... We need a bigger desk. We need okay. bigger everything. Bigger computer, bigger desk, more, more cameras, uh, and more space. I and think, some production I think I think that I think that would be good. <laughs> yeah, Jamie, I need a Jamie. Yeah. Mm. So um, I'm going to go through the crew list that we still need for for Scarecrow. I will write it up later, but we need a focus puller, gaffer, and a grip. I'll pull that focus. Um, May I've got costume designer, but we're not sure we might be able to get away without having one. Uh, hair and makeup, unit manager, two PAs, and we're still deciding on an editor. A little better. Sean sounds like he's in another room. Oh, sounds okay. like he's in another room. We cut a hole in the wall, so he might be. You never can tell with bees. Give some testings. Uh, testing, 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 one, two, three. <laughs> I fell down a well. I ended up in hell. My rival's such a dick, so I beat him with a stick. Victory was mine, and it tastes like lemon lime. Soon in life, I found my footing, and every Sunday, it's sticky date footing. How's that? So if you need someone to write poetry for you, this is the man. Yeah. It all happened by accident. Um, I think it was when I was doing a bit of a... Um, uh, I think I'm better off not talking about it. Maybe one day I'll talk about it more. But that being said, regarding about poetry and... Uh, you know, that it's being done in Lord of Agony. And the, the character of Lord Chris Sybil, played by Jimmy, uh, criticises it. Yeah, the... The wonders of uh, how I first met Jimmy formally was uh, it was on a premiere of another movie and uh, <laughs> it was a grand final day. So uh, usually on grand final day you are a little bit hammered. And he was sitting right next to me and we were watching this film. Do you want to name the film? Oh yeah, it was uh, Subject 36, uh, directed by Alex Laurie in the local one. Done on a minimal budget. Talk, talk yeah. into it. Done, done on a minimal budget, but yeah, very nice flick. But I guess if you're into blood and gore, I guess it's not really your kind of film. It's not that kind of movie. And Jimmy was right next to me and predicting which character would die. It's like, you think he's going to die? No, wait, she's going to die. And this and that. And it's like, mm, no character dies in the film. Oops. Uh, no, but it is, it is a very good film. But please purchase it uh, from uh, Vimeo or from uh, Small Voice Films. Um, so but uh, the thing was, I caught up with Jimmy in Lakeside Shopping Centre two weeks later, and uh, this time we were like more sort of in a sort of like uh, less movie watching, laid yeah, laid back state. Lakeside, Lakeside. And uh, the one thing that came into mind was like he sort of reminded me of Bob Jones mixed with. Um, Sorry, I'm not, not sorry. I'm um, Dick Jones from RoboCop. You know, the evil corporate guy combined with uh, Bob Morden, and it was like, hmm, because he has very little like <laughs> the character in which he was playing in the cinema, and very little care for civilian life, and it was like, hmm, he p plays it off very well, and he has a lot of resemblance to Billy Zane and uh, Billy Zane's legendary performance in Titanic. You know, uh, that scene when he uh, throws the table. <laughs> Yeah, that was all improvised, so it's pretty cool. Andy's, um, Andy's got to go uh, go to bed shortly. He's shattered. He had a busy weekend, as we know, down in yeah. Albany. Can um, we just have another uh, um, sound check, please? Yeah. Emily Emily Lowe said possibly Justine Renzullo, which I take is Peter's wife for possibly hair and makeup. So thank you, Emily. Yeah. I will contact her. Um, and Renee DiStefano said, hey, and awesome job, Sean, with the poetry. 
poetry. Oh, thank you very much for that. Doesn't mind the poetry, this guy? Oh, yeah, there's a few more coming out in the new film. And what's the new film? Oh, that's the uh, Lord of Agony prologue, the okay. fully completed feature. Oh, right, okay. And, uh, yeah, you get a bit of an extra song for my buddy uh, Nick. I actually wrote that poem two days before we ended up uh, shooting. It's a bit of a homage to uh, a restaurant that shut down that made really nice uh, sticky date puddings. <laughs> my bad. It's uh, Peter's sister. Thanks, Emily. Yeah. Same surname. Who knows? Um, is that the song that you sing that I was doing the lighting for behind Brian while he's doing audio? Oh, and, no, that was a uh, Night of the Black Forest. Okay. I think that's like a bit of a story transition from day to night. Pavlova represents day and Black Forest is night. I think that's just kind of like an old way of telling a story, you know, like light and shade, light and shade. And that's the only way you can ever talk and, you know, serenade and this and that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, again, there's a bit of a... Was there a, that poem written in a certain type of style? Or? Oh, yeah, it, um, I think it was through a bit of work on Celtic culture, on how it starts off with, often as if it's a, a guy talking about the natures, the wilderness, or you, in other words, say, you know, um, you know, say women or this and that. And then it moves on into a cafe where it involves a cafe and then it rhymes with this chai latte and a bit of like references on cakes. And then we move more into towards the night. And yeah. And just to top it off, you know, you have the black forest as the final word and that sort of just ends it there. Andy said the video is still out of sync. Uh, yeah, thanks, Andy. Um, <laughs> it actually looks good in playback. Yeah. Um, you don't notice the out of sync in playback. Um, there is a setting in OBS where I can fix that. But, um, I need to uh, work on that in our little test group. Yeah. So, it, what, what movies have you watched lately? Okay. Scotty? So this week I watched... We we showed the trailer from The Martian. Yep. Um, we have a story for you. I really like The Martian. Uh, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Um, really, really honest. Thanks, really, Andy. Really... Sean sounds better. Good to know. Yep. Uh, I had the compressor um, function right up. Could you turn the air down? We have our first dad joke, people. That's the first dad joke. First dad joke. He made a sign. He made a sign. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna fill in the joke bit. You can only see the dad bit, <laughs> but it is there. Ah, uh, the Martian, Matt Damon, um, Childish Gambino is it, and he is in it. Um, I should have written down his real name. Childish Gambino won. Um, he got the hottest one hundred. This last year, who's the, who's the the black guy from Lethal Weapon? Danny Glover. Yeah, so he's a, he's a Glover. Donald oh, okay. McKinley Glover Jr. It's a very similar name. I don't think they're related. I'm not sure. He's the black guy from Community. Ah. Oh. Um, he's in it and he saves the day. Cool. Sorry, spoil, spoiler alert. I'm trying not to do spoiler alerts when I do this. No, that's all right. I've accidentally spoiled a few things tonight. Ah, is that does it include the pants? Um, well, no, nah, not really. Only that I'm wearing blue boxes. If uh, that matters in or anything. Dad joke. Um, Matt Damon had an honest performance. It started off like midway through. I, I gave a three point seven five. I give reviews halfway through and then change it at the end. That is true. Usually, some films so, sort of top it off usually like in the third act or, or it could just destroy itself yeah that but is true i give it a i give it something so i just to remind myself of what how i felt halfway through um i've written down it should have got an award and then i researched that it got seven awards <laughs> um golden globe best actor matt damon golden globe best motion picture but it's it's category was um 
um, musical or comedy drama, and it was neither. No, it's musical or comedy. So it got the Golden, Golden Globe Best Motion Picture f- for musical or comedy. Did you hear Matt Damon sing? No. I didn't really hear that much music in it. Drama, possibly, but... No, it was a drama, but drama wasn't actually included in the yeah, title of the award. A comedy there, though. A little bit. Some of it was yeah, funny. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. You seen The Martian? Oh, yeah. Um, I don't think... I can just categorise more gonna... as a sci-fi drama. Yeah. More so than anything else. I uh, so. got The Empire, Best Actor, People's Choice Awards, Favourite Drama... Hugo Award, Best Drama, ADG, Excellence in Production, and The Satellite, Best Sound. He's got to answer Andy's question. You need more light on Sean? Well, he's got a hat on to begin with, and he's the black ghost. So we don't need and, more. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, we're using my phone. Sorry about that. I just have a thing for berets. And we're using Scott's phone because the camera's playing up. So. Mm. Um, oh, there you go. You can see his face a little bit. Looks a bit like the Godfather back there. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um... Never go I have a been a bit of a godfather figure for a few yeah. nephews of mine in the Philippines. Gary, sorry, I've been away from my PC. The new Star Wars trailer, what do you think? Um, could we have some more information on that? So well, I Gary, Warren loves it. I show think the he world. crammed his pants on it. So, Renee DiStefano said she loved The Martian. Can't remember what happened mm-hmm. completely at the end. Well, my take on the new Star Wars uh, trailer, the trailer itself is oh. a little bit too short in order to um, okay. judge as of yet. Still watch it if you want. Mm. Uh, so, bullshit factor. I've Bullshit factor of for Martian. Uh, for Martian. Wasn't a lot, actually. Um, at the end, um, there was a little bit. Um, but I think that was actually part of the premise of the movie, that you had to do something that went beyond reality. It's not really beyond reality. It was very simple. How did you find him growing the stuff? Was that the bullshit factor or not? Like growing all the food? No, I, well, I, I've got a science background. I think that was, that was quite... Um, you think it would actually work? Plausible. I'd have to look at uh, the chemical hydrazine. I haven't actually like had a look at the chemical hydrazine and see how much uh, extra stuff is in it. But yes, he could have made water from it. Um, I don't think it would have exploded in his face like that, though. Okay. But you never know. Isn't it based usually, on true events? Well, usually... <laughs> no one's been to Mars, man. Okay. Ever. Yet. They even they even say that may have not got to the moon. Anyway, that's another thing. Um, it's a podcast. So, so at the end, there was a little bit of, of bullshit factor, but... I think it was completely plausible. Mm. Do you think it was plausible? Well, it's possible. I will put it that way. Possible, plausible. It's, the thing is with science fictional films, and this is like pretty much going from films from Blade Runner and onwards, is like usually it's technology and stuff that doesn't exist currently, but it always sort of transpires to um, actual scientists who are working on things, and usually they get ideas and, you know... They always work towards stuff, kind of like Leonardo da Vinci and the whole rotator, which eventually, a couple of hundred years later, would become the helicopter. You know, so... Hmm. Sorry, Michael Carey, your mate, just... Um, hey, Mikey. ...said that he couldn't see it because he wasn't a member of the page, so I just approved him. Ah. All done. Hey, Mikey. Try that. Um, so what's the name of the Star, star, uh, I'm just star, to, star Wars trailer? Just to I'm still it. wearing a Star Wars shirt today. I think it's um, IX, which is uh, number nine. Yeah, Star Wars trailer. Yeah, Star Wars number nine. Hmm? I thought they did the whole. Star Wars trailer 2019. Yeah. Oh. See, it's kind of gone yeah, and complicated. Star Wars nine. Because, uh, you know, they were trying to do the Marvel routine by trying to plug up a Star Wars film every year. That's the reason why it's kind of gotten confusing for some people. Well, Gary, in answer to your question, I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. Um, I am. I've sort of lost interest after... I can't, re- can't even remember the number of it. Return of the Jedi, I guess. Um, possibly. So, yeah, to me, it's just another trailer, and I probably won't watch it, but it depends if we go as a group with the movie guys that I go with. I'm not sure if that's it or not. Star Wars, the last Jedi trailer? No, that's the last Jedi. It's not that one. Star Wars 9, so it's one, that's it there. 
Star Wars Episode Nine trailer receives millions of views in twenty four hours. So go down, go down, go down. That's it there with the girl, the teaser. Star Wars. So, did you like Solo? Uh, it wasn't bad. I saw it with Aaron Camp, but yeah, I didn't mind it. It was, it was okay. Just uh, line this up to make sure it. So, Michael Carey, hey gents, big hello from West Aussie, passing through Melbourne. Hey, Michael. You in Melbourne, mate? Travels right around the world, that guy. What's he do? Um, inspects um, helicopter structures, mm. platforms on oil rigs and stuff. Yeah, he must really get around. Yeah. So we could call him Chopper. Yeah. No, no sign for that one. Dad joke. It is a little bit delayed, see? So. Oh. Uh, you're looking at uh, our actual live. Oh, okay. oh yeah. See, uh, what um, Scott over here is trying to do is uh, get this uh, Star Wars uh, Episode Nine uh, trailer up. Yeah. In the middle. Lined up, yeah. It's really wide. Look how wide yeah, that is yeah, compared to normal. That's what they say about yeah. it. Have they just cut it off? Yeah, I think it's just been released or something, so it's probably taking a while to sort of, like, get its head together. But in the trailer, it doesn't really seem to show much. It's mostly just Ray, uh, you know, um, the overpowered... Uh, oh, well, uh, show it right now. Just in the desert, and... Uh... We've passed on all we know. A thousand generations live in you now. But this is your fight. Well, there you go. What do you think of that? I feel sad. Why? I feel sad that it's going to be the last one. It can't be because it says The Rise of the Skywalker. So how can it be the last one if it's The Rise of the Skywalker? But they said it's going to be the last one, man. Yeah. Well, last one in terms of the trilogy cycle. You see every 12 or 20 what years. What do they call a nine a nine-ergy? Yeah. Nine, a nine-ergy. What's nine in Italian? You did Not Italian. Nove. So, it's a novel novology. Yeah. Uh, sounds novology? Would yeah. anyone like to pick me up on that one? I'm yeah, sure I'm but, wrong. But maybe in the next ten years they're gonna do another trilogy, so it's gonna be a continuous uh Gary said the rump. force is not strong with you, Scott. The force is very strong with me. And your mate Michael said Star Wars is a reflection of ancient philosophy now. It is trying to uh reflect post modern philosophy. Well, that's the thing when SJWs come into stuff. 
and enlist now in the Galactic Empire. Nah, we're good. Renee Stefano, I wish I knew more about Star Wars. Don't they keep going back in time with Star Wars? Yes, I think they do. Well, they did the one at the first three, like basically in the middle of the story, and and then they went back to do uh, the f- the prequels. Well, you see, that was George Lucas's mistake, kind of. After he did the original trilogy, they took a massive layoff, but I think there was a lot of weird, um, hectic stories behind the scenes. And sort of like 15 years later, after the return of Jedi, that's when uh, he um, started with the prequels, except by then a lot of the original crew who did the original trilogy, they were no longer involved, and technology advanced uh, so much, and George Lucas decided to sort of can the practical effects and go for all-out CGI. And uh, I guess for anyone who's knowledgeable on the franchise, uh, knows that the prequels had this... uh, uh, You know what I mean, right? That whole... yeah, so the original yeah. ones were done with models on strings yeah. going going through mini forests and stuff. That is true, and uh, and and then there was the rest was just done with computers and stuff. Mm. Like it was a whole mixture of different artists from different sort of disciplines and categories, sort of combining to sort of create something. But I think it's the probably thing also was shot on film. Yeah, true. That was another big factor. And Mark Hamill said it himself that the editor of the first three, uh, she no longer was involved in any of the ones. After Return of the Jedi, he mentioned that she herself also had a pinnacle point of what sort of made the original trilogy somewhat great. Where, okay, so going back to um, the prequels, I don't think the prequels are as bad as uh, some people sort of make it out to be. I think it's really more the painfully um, dated CGI effects. And not yeah. to mention, uh, yeah. So what else have you watched, Scotty? I liked them. Anything else? Yeah. Um... Shout out to Blake from last week. I got a screenshot of you being on the Heights doing yoga, mate. Uh, did you? Because I started watching the Heights. And so, uh, I also have to compliment him on that uh, disco with that uh, Gangnam style dancing. Uh, yeah, my yeah. sister's fundraiser. He, uh, he he stole the night. He also there's another video of him doing Freddie. He rolled up his sleeves of the broom, but the Gangnam style with the caterpillar. Yeah, was. Uh, I'd like to I'm know good. if Blake did the caterpillar. Before the video of Prince Harry coming out doing the Caterpillar. I have no idea. Because they both came out at very similar times, in my opinion. Well, that was about three or four weeks ago. No, like I said, I saw the I saw Prince Harry doing doing the Caterpillar a couple of days later. I don't know. It might have Maybe been, he watched Blake. It might have been the same night. He might have watched Blake. Six degrees, you know, like... You never know, like That's right. we we shared the shit out of that video, didn't we? <laughs> I um I watched Glass the other night. D- didn't mind it. Um, Rating? I'd probably give it a three and a half. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. It was a bit shattered at the end when they all. <laughs> no, there's no pun intended. Oh, there is a pun intended. But yeah, I think yeah, I think they maybe could have left. I know it was a trilogy, but they probably could have left it open for one more. But. Glass is the third one? Yes. Unbreakable split. It tells you, it shows you at the end of the credits. It goes, Unbreakable split glass. I haven't seen any of them. You got homework for next week. Unbreakable. That's the one with uh, where Bruce Willis is on the train. The train has exit. He's the only survivor. And that's why they think he's got super... super oh, yeah, I've seen that one. Well, he actually was. He couldn't die, wouldn't he? That's right. The split's the one where it just focuses on him. He's got all the personalities. Split. Split. With, All right. Yeah. So that's my that's my uh, homework. homework for this week. I also watched another series thanks to Jimmy on Netflix called Black Summer, which I've started watching. It's a zombie film. Um, so it doesn't look too bad. I'm up to the sixth episode or something. Finished watching Titans, which is another good one on Netflix. Um, I downloaded Doom Patrol, and these are all DC characters that you don't hear of. So Netflix is um, sorry, Titans is Robin. And then you, he has four four other four other random superheroes you don't know about that help him out. Robin as in Robin Black Band. Batman. Batman is Robin, Robin yeah. yeah. Um, and it's the Australian actor Brenton Thwaites who plays Robin. Australia. Australia. And then Doom Patrol has um, Brendan Fraser from The Mummy and that. He plays a robot. It's just a brain inside a suit. And then you've got another three random superheroes from DC as well. So. And you've got Timothy Dalton as yeah, Timothy the Dalton, that's right, character yeah. on yeah, a wheelchair. 
So no, they're, they're pretty good. Yeah, Black Summer is good, Gary. Uh, it's um, one of those films where it shows like, <clears throat> it'll say the, the person's name, whoever's playing who, and then it focuses on them, and it has the other ones in the background. It goes like that sort of thing, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, it's actually getting pretty uh, pretty exciting. And Jimmy came up with a really good concept. He said, we should make a zombie film in the outback, right? But have Aboriginal hunters and trackers as well. Hmm. Which isn't actually a bad idea. Tracking down the zombies. Yeah, they track the zombies and stuff. But Brian Chance, yo, and Demetrius, yo, 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 Brian. yo. Brian. Um, Brian said, "What's Sean drinking? He's not drinking. He's. It's actually drinking responsibly. Responsibly, it's our responsibility to make sure he's got a drink." Oh yeah, that is true. I've just apparently he's working tomorrow, so I only had one. Oh no, no, I'm not, I'm not working tomorrow. That's I'm like, not working tomorrow. Uh, but I just got a few like you know things to you work on. You can sleep on, here. Like of... You got a fair way of drive. I'm oh, not. I'm no. not asking you to sleep with me. So. Come on, Scotty. That look on your face was like, <laughs> what? You know, you know, spooning leads to Scotty. Renee says, "Yeah, you'd have to check out Titans, Renee. I think you'll like it." Um, back to the heights. Okay. So, I still haven't watched it. Yeah, it's like Perth's a country practice. Yeah, Not really, but better. Yeah, like, okay. um, mm. but what's really amazing is that uh, one of the actresses we worked with, Cara McCarthy, she's in it. She's also in that ad, um, where they've got the police sitting in the back lot when you. Just oh yeah, I'm, I'm seeing her face a lot on posters next to bus stops a lot. Sorry, now, to, sorry to interrupt you, Scotty. I going. saw Jimmy on the back of a bus today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's actually ironic because he was it's telling freaky. us that they were using a UV, ca or a UV camera, all right? but he actually got sunburnt because all the takes they had, in between takes he had an umbrella over him, but he wasn't allowed to wear sunscreen in the, in the, in the take. So he actually got sunburnt and he's on an ad preventing some skin cancer. I remember him talking about that, actually, and um, remembering how I f the hypocrisy I felt for that. Yeah. Irony. <clears throat> yeah so speaking of irony um yeah there was a uh, regarding about the the heights um it's uh and there's a bit more of a niche market i think uh if you really enjoy soaps you'll you'll like it that is i use body wash i don't use yeah. soap soap you know soap operas yeah. that is so you've yeah. got the, you're getting the chemicals yeah. that like would turn you gay yeah all right Returning the frogs, gay. I like to you. I like to just be clean. So, between the hospital, the police, pubs, and a slum high rise, it doesn't. Re it's not really slummy, but it has a bad reputation. Mm. Um, I kept trying to look out for places I, around Perth that I knew, and I knew most of them. But I think that I'm, one of the one I'm of the, thinking the, that the building is actually in Osborne Park. If yeah. someone would actually like to, um, yeah. To clarify where the actual heights, the building, because mm. it doesn't look like any of the ones from the south side that I've um, mm. managed yeah, the, to the, beat the, beat to for various reasons in my life. It does ring a bell, but I wouldn't be surprised if it is Osborne Park. Oh, um, there's one. Um, there's yeah. one just off like um, you can see it from Glendalow train station towards the ocean. Hmm. Looks similar, but. High rise brick buildings of the 1960s, like, yeah. a lot of them look really similar unless they've had the, uh, the whole, uh, what's that? Some of them get facelifted. And... Oh. Should we mention the other, the other features that, that Black goes to with in this online competition? I'm uh, just going to finish with the heights. Yeah. I liked it. Um, it moves very, very fast in the start of it. Um, and I felt that it moved too fast because they were just trying to. They were trying to like the first few episodes. They're trying Play to keep. They're trying to. They're trying to keep your attention, and they're moving on to stuff really, really quickly. Like, do, you, do you find you lose track of what it's about? Um, I found I was overwhelmed yeah, okay. with information. Um, where they, where they could have spread out the drama a bit. Mm -hmm. um, spread out the. Um, Maybe they were restricted to episodes or something and they had to cram it in, not sure. Yeah, um, I think it lost a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but third episode, I'm only four, th four episodes in. Four, uh, third episode, it starts to become more normal. I think I'll but, have to watch it. But a country practice, like, that was very slow. Mm. Like, 
if anyone's actually old enough to remember a country remember practice. Well, yeah, yeah, but you're Sons the same age as me. Sons and daughters. Well, I mean, going by the by the Sons title, con- country practice. Love you know, then, uh, yeah. after. Cheers of sadness yeah, right, for enough. everyone. Anyway. So, you were saying? So, there's four other feature films that are in the same category as Black Ghost for this online festival. Or this festival. I'm going to put the names up. We've had a look at some of the trailers. Awards. Yes. Festival. So, what, we, what we'd like you to do, if you want to, and not don't be biased, okay, is have a look at these trailers and let us know how you think they compare to Black Ghost trailer. All right, we want your honest opinion. If you th- say, think they're better, say they're better. If you don't, say they're not, because that's what we'll be up against. So, I'll put the names up. <coughs> There's one called Subterranean. Upstate story: The sun never sets on integrity, which I think is a true story about religion, Christian or something. And the other one, only one I couldn't find was half empty, half full. So I'll put up who directs them. So if you look at them on YouTube, you know who they are. So I'll do that. And if you could put up a poll, or even just on this page, which one you think is better? And don't be scared to tell us the bad stuff, because that's the only way that we actually learn of the stuff that we need to make better. There are a lot of categories too that, that they can get voted for. So except the music soundtrack, don't talk bad about the music soundtrack. <laughs> Tell the truth. He's all right. He could tell he's a big boy. Yeah, I'm shit. <laughs> nah, he's all good. A big boy, eh? Big boy. Not that I've been looking. Sean, what have you watched lately? Well, recently, like I mentioned about the Green Book, there was also another f- film uh, this year that I watched, which was uh, one of Clint Ace. Well. Could be, you know, it was Clint Eastwood's latest film, uh, the, Mule. the Mule. No, yeah. I, I liked it. Yeah, yeah, me and a few folks saw it because, uh, you know, it's uh, could be Clint Eastwood's last movie. Hopefully, it isn't. But that yeah, was actually a very good flick. If there's yeah. anyone that's done enough movies, um, oh, your your mate Scotty Wesley says that show was torture. I'm not sure he's talking about the heights. Um, Michael Carey said it launched a few careers, but that was it. Well, the thing I'm is, like, 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 like I say, it's more of a niche thing. That's for people who like soap operas, you know. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of soap operas, but um, I enjoyed it because uh, I could see, like, Friends and yeah. Perth. Now, the, the, I like watching yeah. Perth and stuff. That, that is true. Um, the the Perth things. Um, I'll just finish quickly with the Mule. Yeah, if you're into crime thrillers and whatnot, and wish to see a hundred year old man outwit the cartel, that's a good recommendation. And it has a lot of flowers, so in case if you're into gardening, it's a very good flick. But yeah, back to uh, Perth films. Um, ah, there, I don't, there hasn't been ones that haven't been no, no, they haven't been completed yet, but there are a few um, currently in uh, post. And uh, recently, I've been working with an actress, uh, Virginia Cole. Uh, she's in the Lord of Agony. I'm not going to give out which character she plays, but let's say it's a top secret. And she's very good at kneeing people in the groin. Nevertheless, uh, she Have was you got in... more groin close-ups other than my groin <laughs> close-ups? Uh, well, let's just say uh, some of yes, the ghouls you take a, yeah, a bit of a beating. <laughs> but um, you got to count on how many groin close-ups you got in this? Well... By tradition and by law, you got a finale in the third act that really, you know, uh, I'll get to that. Big game, Uh No, not not quite. But yeah, Virginia Cole was working in, on one of Gonzalo's films, which was called The Society, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't think there's a trailer up for it yet, is there? Uh, but... No, I think they're still in post production and they're working on Alexander now. So, okay. and then they've got is it the unknown? Is that the other one? Series member, yeah, yeah, I think it's called. The I don't Unknown. know if that's a working title yet or not. Yeah, yeah. Oh, geez, you got a yeah. must have an army of, of editors or something. No, or? a lot, lot of projects on a lot the of energy. I think he's trying to finish one as he go at, at, at a time. Okay, yeah, but she mentioned that, yeah, it was uh physically grueling the society and that. Well, she, you know, her and the cast got a good exercise out of it, so yeah, that's what she mentioned. So I'm just posting up those films I mentioned to you now. Um, so if you could please check out the trailers for them all, that would be awesome. So how do we get on this subject? Oh, since yes. Since the Heights? Well, since the Heights, uh, I was talking about about The Mule and then uh, more about Perth-based films, but recently some of them have been uh, in um, 
in the post. Although a lot of agony will be coming out this week and uh, it's a bit sort of like artistic agony and elements of the end only on steroids, you know. And for anyone that enjoyed um, Fleur's performance as the mystic in the past film, she gets more screen time in this and we get to explore a little bit more of her character. And you actually get to see her whip out a bit of Gandalf as she uh, electrocutes certain individuals with her periscope. Did you ever see The Hounds of Love? Oh, I was actually in the film as uh, an extra. I was one with the uh, purple shirt walking so, into a... We, did you shoot in the park across the road from my place? I... Because most of it was like... Was there a deli? Oh, you're at... Were you one of the two guys outside the deli? Yeah. Far out. No, I didn't... I didn't. I didn't recognise you from it. Oh, my back was to the camera, so... Um... They got his good side. Okay, so... Yeah. I, Kublai Primary School is that way. Mm -hmm. I walk down the street, do a little dog leg, and it's like... You can see it from here. It's just on the next hill. Um, but at the end of the movie, she actually comes out on on that street. Like, just where I was... Where I used to walk to primary school, she comes out there... At the time, I was going to school there. That's the premise of the movie. Mm. It was a bit. I'm getting chills now. It's a bit. Oh, I got a fan. You got a fan for him? Um, my, sorry, Gary Centrone said soap operas are, are moving fashion magazines for gossip lovers. Well, in a way, he kind of nailed it there. And you know? Michael said, Michael Gary said, soap operas have been replaced by reality TV, which I hate. I hate reality TV. I prefer soap operas to reality TV. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, unless it's 90s gladiators. Except or UFC. That's reality TV, isn't except it? Except The Fool's Kitchen isn't really reality TV, is it? Oh, yeah. Speaking of uh, something entertaining, uh, on Friday night I went to this uh, charity screening of uh, films held by uh, Ron Arthurs and uh, Sue Arthurs. And there was hey, ten Ron. films, all starring the Emperor himself, uh, Ron. Ten, ten films of Ron Arthur's, were they oh, yeah. obviously not feature films if there was ten of them? Oh, no, they were all shorts, including Red Hood the Fallen. And this movie called Kevin and Kevin, where Ron plays the owner of this animal farm museum. And he has an incompetent son by the name of Kevin. And Ron's character leaves Kevin in the farm. And there's a tiger snake by the name of Kevin. Ron leaves the place because, you know, his character has Spoiler to take alert. care of an emergency. And uh, this is really when the crap uh, starts to explode and hit the fan. I'm not going to spoil too much of the film. And you get this cool mockumentary type movie. And uh, let's just say Ron's character, he's a guy who really hates the parliament a lot. And he's raging war on urban neighborhoods. And it's pretty cool to see Ron Arthur's ditching darts into a picture of Tony Abbott's uh, face. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like, I'm not into politics of that, but just the scene itself is like sheer gold. And then it's like he sets up water bombs and he's ditching it at uh, teens on bikes and then uh, chasing off hooligans with a high-powered water gun. <laughs> Are you playing this trailer? Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen this? Yeah. I was there. Me and my daughter were in it. Except our scene isn't in it. Uh, My daughter gets a credit, but we're not in it. Uh, we, it was at Vic Park Aquatic Centre, but they cut that scene out. So, mm. Am I the only person in this room that wasn't in Hounds of Love? Probably. Mm. Maybe, they, maybe they were telling you something. Well, I think it probably would be more chilling if I was in it. And what about if your groin was in it? And I actually would was walking past that house in 1980, whatever it was. What about if your groin was in it? <clears throat> well, it's only his movies that, are, that my, <laughs> I get close ups of my crotch. Uh, look about right. Yeah. Looks about right. Virginia Cole and Saxon and Alex are watching. Oh, oh hey, Sax. And when you say Alex, I think you're a photo. Oh. You want a lift? Oh, are you sure? Jump in. Well, I read your little diary. Mum wouldn't let you out, so you snuck out, didn't you? She probably 
probably not even looking for you. <laughs> you think she's prettier than me? Come on, Evie. I'm a queen. Go over the edge. He doesn't love you. I really liked it, um, and that doesn't actually make me a psycho, okay, people? I would have given it a four. It's one of my highest rated okay. Perthfields. So, I like I liked that one, but I think the one he did after that was a bit of a letdown. What was the one he did after that? Uh, there was one he made in Hollywood. Yeah, because he... Because that one was so good, he, he they shipped him straight out to film a multi-million dollar film, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Are you referring to Stephen Curry? The director. Oh, wait, the director. The director. Um, oh, okay, I have little knowledge on it. Um, my phone, my, um, my evidence device is over there. Shooting this. Yeah, I seem to realise we're always on the phones a lot these days. See a lot of kids uh, walking on the road, you know, when I'm working and... Ben Young. Uh, yeah, always on the phones and this and that. Which, of course, IT communication, it plays a big part in modern films these days where characters are often texting a lot or communicating a lot through the, through the whole entire, you know, IT-based communications. Is the, the movie we didn't do any. called Extinction. Yeah. Right. We didn't do any texting in Black Coast. I've seen it. It's not too no, bad. But bit. I think apparently from what I heard was he didn't have a lot of control when it got to the end. The studio said, no, we're going to edit it this way. And so yeah. in a way, it's not really his fault the way it turned out. <coughs> More for commercialism, um, that is. Yeah, it's called Extinction. Yeah. Extinction, official trailer. Ben, ben Young, yeah. Ah, oh, it's Netflix, eh? Hey? Mm. Every day, we go about our routines. Work, home, family. Work, home, family. Another nightmare. Work, home, family. Work, sleep okay? I don't understand why you won't get some help. Because they're going to say it's in my head. It is just in your head. Please, I think these dreams are the future. What if something bad is coming? You see that? You kidding? Of course I can. What is that? Trust me. We'll be safe. We're coming. In your nightmares. Did you see them kill us?
Yeah, it looks interesting. I didn't know that um, a Perth director directed that. I, I didn't mind it. He got, yeah. he got the call up after Hounds of Love did so well. Mm. Your friend Michael said it looks okay, but uh, the Netflix brand is hit and miss. Basically, there is no brand, just content. Oh, they've, yeah. They're holding all the money at the moment, so... I mean, if you see Most something that says Netflix original, Netflix have filmed it themselves. The other ones are ones that Netflix have picked up. So there's a difference. So Disney, DC, Marvel, and Netflix, and the occasional Lucas is probably 90% of big budget movies these days. Well, a lot of the Marvel, like the Avengers, is on Stan because Stan, uh, Disney owns Stan. So that's why you won't see any any of the Avengers on Netflix. <coughs> so I was told today. Hmm. That's interesting. So if you want to watch the Avengers movies, go on Stan. Or Scott's nose. You can get it from Scott's nose hmm. as well. Yeah, it's kind of like rusty shackle food. <laughs> We're going to give it 10 more minutes, guys, and we're going to wrap it up. That'll make it 10 o'clock. Yeah. Going back to um, uh, IT communication, I started to realize when I've been writing up more stories and scripts that a lot of people these days are very fast paced. They can always text and communicate through phones, which. I don't know, you always had to figure out a way when you write up a story on how you neutralize that factor. Mm. The good thing is, in The Lord of Agony, um, that is actually uh, somewhat neutralized. It's very good, especially for um, uh, horror films. <laughs> Arguably, that sort of takes away the fact that there's no getaway and there's no help sort of thing when the phone is uh, decapitated. Oh yeah, a bit of a minor thing that does move towards the horror route as the film progresses. And l like I mentioned, there is uh, to satisfy Sax, Blotch and the other fan base, there is a bit of a uh, warfare towards the later parts of it. And this explains my um, rigorous work on uh, creating those uh, telescopes, the um, axes and the props, mostly from um, a lot of... Um, old construction material and random crap that's been thrown out yeah <laughs> gary just confirmed what i said he said ben young's cut of the film that one we just watched extinction was ruined by the studio but partially restored on netflix so it was completely different to what he originally mm. had in mind the studio took over and said nope this is how we're going to do it mm. well, how does he mean by partially restored though maybe when netflix picked it up they, they did another they cut might've, they might have added some more of his stuff into it I'm guessing. That's Ooh. what I'm guessing. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And speaking of... Oh, so adding, originally oh, went yeah. to film, like to the movies. Yeah. yeah. And then Netflix picked it up. Yeah. Right. yeah so did I another think, cut. Oh, that's same. interesting. Yeah. Oh. And also in adding on more things to a film, um, anyone remember Russell Lamb from yeah. uh, the yeah. Black Guys yeah. film? He was the, the super goon with the uh, chain. In uh, this new film, he plays a character by the name of Captain Pete, who's a salty sea captain. Uh, is this the photo I saw with him with the big beard? Oh, yes. And you get to see him uh, pile drive uh, a few people. <laughs> it will make sense when you see the film. And, uh, Hi, Danica. Yeah. Hi, Danica. A lot of, a lot of apple cider in it. So, yeah, that's uh, something I thought I you were going forward to. Do you have any of that apple cider left? That was really nice. Oh, yeah, that was really nice apple cider, huh? But if you really want good apple cider, um, check out uh, Little Creatures in uh, Fremantle. Um, yeah. Where I work at the Raffles, um, Colonial Brewing on it. Um, they do birdie cider. It's actually like, it's pretty nice. Oh, um, yeah. I've bottled birdie cider and the Brookvale ginger ale there. Um, put it in a, in a, in a, like a two liter bottle. Put it in the freezer. And you know how alcohol doesn't freeze? Um, but neither neither does a lot of uh, the fla natural ginger and apple flavorings, so it's called freeze distilling. So out of out of that much, say say you filled it to there and it froze, um, you'd only get about that much. Um, but it, out of it, the rest the ice will stay in there. It's called freeze distilling. It'll turn 5% into 30, 30 or 40% alcohol, and it tastes delicious. Yeah. Oh. And gets you smashed. You've had it before. Have I? Remember that ginger apple oh, thing yeah, that yeah, I got yeah, out of the freezer? Nice. It was yeah, like yeah, yeah. real nice. Mm. And real speaking nice. of smashed, um, this was a 
Something unique that happened last year was again in the Lord of Agony on the set. Uh, we were filming one of the final dialogue scenes and I had to direct one of the young actors, a talented fella by the name of uh, Jesse DePaz, who is the son of Yvette. And uh, I had to get him to really smash an item and shout out a line that was so epic. It'll make sense when you see it, but it's actually something I'm very proud of. And uh, it's a great line that signifies the unity of people, including mankind. Because quite often, men are often billed down as somewhat evil in this day and age, as mean, one-dimensional wife beaters. And I'm trying to neutralize that stereotype and show more well, that, character development and stuff. And, uh, no, I like Netflix, more. Gary. I like, actually like yeah. Netflix. But, yeah, this, this line, not really a one-liner, but this line, it, it really does make sense. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into the origins of it, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool. You'll buy? Yeah. Um, in a minute. So, <laughs> Gary said, despite what you think of Netflix, they are taking more risks than the ma major studios, hence why now Disney and Apple are now in the running for their own streaming platforms. Uh, you also got to look at Amazon. Amazon Prime. Um, Amazon Prime is huge in America and it's not so much here. Yeah, but I don't think that's really for show series. I think it's more just for filming films. I could be wrong. Um, it doesn't happen very often, but... I think they're newer, so they haven't actually set up all their... Although ne Netflix about... has been going on since they used to um, mail DVDs to you late. That was yeah, a long time ago. But Amazon don't have a lot... Like, there's some people, the Jabba Brothers, when they put stuff on, on Amazon Prime, I can't watch it here because it's not available in this country. So I've had, when they did Haunted oh, Tours... Oh, that's also with Netflix. Yeah, but when they did Haunted Tours, I had to buy the DVD from them because it wasn't available in this region. So a lot of stuff on Amazon, unless they, they give you access, is not available in the region you're in. Oh, crap. But that is also the same with Netflix. Like, um, Netflix America is like twice, three times as big as... Yeah, but that's if, as you, big that's as if you get Netflix America. Australia, as Netflix Australia. Mm. Oh, you can just get a VPN. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've got a VPN. ExpressVPN. It's good to use. I used to um, in China. I remember mine. Mm, how much longer we got? CyberGhost. We're going to wrap it up now, I think. Uh, not yet. Well, so, yeah. Ron... Uh, gave us Love, Death, and Robots last week. Um, it's very, they're very short. They're 17 minutes long. Yep. Remember that, um, have you seen it? Love, Death, and Robots. It's on Netflix. Well, with Ron Arthurs? No. no, no it's just oh, not at all. Okay. Something he recommended. He recommended it. We asked, we saw the, the trailer and it was very fast moving and we couldn't get anything from it. I started watching it and turned it off. I thought, no. You did? Mm. How'd you feel? What, what made you turn it off? I just, it looked, well, I didn't realise from the title it was going to be an anim animated because I never watched the trailer. It's not actually animated. Well, close enough to. It has a filter over it. But anyway, so yeah. And, I just, and CGI. I just started watching it and I'm like, no, this isn't really what I'm into, so turn it off. How far did you get into it? Three minutes. <sighs> uh, See what I have to deal with? It reminded me of no, that, that's okay. okay. I think it, it, because it's a bit of a, um, what you call, artsy-fartsy well, I gave it a 3.5. Uh, Are you watching you know, the same show? It, it I actually watched it, the show. It, 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 it acquires a certain show. taste, you know. It, I actually watched taste. the show. Yeah. Mm. Look, at the start, the first three minutes, I was like, is this animation? Or is that not animation? Or is it filmed and then put a filter over it? Um, it's filmed, put a filter over it, and CGI. Um, look, it's only a 17-minute TV show. And you didn't get to the end of it. No, because that's, that's 14 minutes. At the, end of the, at the end of the first TV show, um, it's got a great twist, which really... Like, the three and a half stars that I gave it was all because of the last minute and a half. Um, the CGI of these fighting... These massive fighting creatures in UFC style, but they're not... Like, this. They're, they're piloted cyborgs. Um, Grammatic, it's... Pilot of Cyborgs, it's dramatic, had great effects. Anthony won't like the accent, though he'll skip over it. I fucking wrote that down. Um, so he doesn't seem to like British accents very much. I don't mind, much. Like, I like Jason Statham, he's not too bad. Uh, Cockney. 
There's some that I don't because yeah, I'm not, so, I'm not, like not saying all the all of the British accent. There's just some that I, don't. I can't so believe I don't. Uh, watch a lot of I'd nail that. Although in saying that, I did watch. I think it's called Black Mirror. Anthony won't like the accent. Yeah. He'll skip over. I think it's called Black Mirror. It's on Netflix. Okay. But yeah, I think what he doesn't like is how much of Black Mirror you uh, said? Posh accents all of, all of or the, something. Whatever we're showing here. Um, there's another one called Channel Zero. Okay. Channel Zero is only available that I've seen. I don't. I, sh- I actually don't know where you would, where you would get it, lawfully. And Channel Zero. Um, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but Channel Zero, it's better than any of the Black Mirrors. Um, if you want a thriller, like a psychological thriller TV show, I recommend Channel Zero. Actually, the second season of Channel, Z- Channel Zero came out. I'm like. I really don't want to fucking do that to myself. That's how ba- that's how bad it is, and awesome it is at the same time. Um, Candle Cove is another name for it. Channel Zero. I don't want to give it away because uh, it makes you cringe. If you don't like cringy movies, like cringy TV stuff, it's like. Uh... Well, on that note, we're gonna call it a night. Monday. Okay. Mm-hmm. Has anyone else got anything last minute? Next minute. Next minute. Next minute. All right, guys. So next week we've got uh, Mm -hmm. Jimmy Kudas, the comedian. And check out his Dirty Channel YouTube page. Um, Thanks for coming on, Sean. Oh, no worries. Thanks for coming on, you know, letting me on board. I haven't done this for a while, and it's good to sort of, uh, yeah, converse with uh, the It's good to have you around. I've been trying to get you around here for ages. Oh, same here. I've just been trying to find time and that, and I've... Yeah, it's a bit of a... Uh, if you want to find time... Yeah, you like my, you time, time, like my stereo. And, oh, yeah. And this, now, so this is the system that I um, did all the sound on, like Ghost With. So cr- yeah. crank it up, listen to the slightest bit. and The hand's moving on the boom pole, but we won't go into that Google icon. All right, guys, we're going to scoot. We'll see you next Monday. Yeah. See you, guys. Bourbon whiskey. Ciao for now.